welcome to the Ghost of Harren Hall. My name's Simon. And I'm McKelly. Thanks for joining us for episode three of our chapter by chapter book review of a song of ice and a song of ice and fire by George R. R. Martin. And my uh, notes here have comical misspelling. <laughs> George, I George Martian. <laughs> <laughs> I was just noticing that. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> uh, today we're discussing. Uh, yeah, so we're on episode three, but of course we're still out, we're out of sync. We're right. discussing yep. chapter two of A Game of Thrones, which is Catelyn. Wow. It gets very confusing. It, it's uh, going to, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to get fed up of this. But we'll survive. Right. Um, so uh, let's start with our usual summary of the chapter. Over to you, McKelly. All right. Well, the chapter starts with a fairly long digression on how Catelyn feels about the North, God's woods, and religion. The primary action is when she tells Ned that his mentor and latterly his brother-in-law, John Aaron, has died. Ned is clearly upset. Furthermore, King Robert and his giant entourage are descending, or ascending, on Winterfell, which cheers Ned up at the prospect, despite being a bit put out by how many people were in that party. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's, it's quite a, it's not a very long chapter, and... and, uh, a lot of action. Not an awful lot of action, no. But it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, you get the first time that the re- sort of religious aspects of uh, the right. the world are yeah. sort of kicked around a little bit. Um, we meet Catelyn. Uh, she's she, she's someone that you know the I'm lady. fond of. Yeah, I'm fond lady of, of Winterfell. Yeah. Um, so she hails from River Riverrun. Um, she's part of House Tully. It's interesting to me that she. She talks about the godswoods and that the godswoods are anachronistic now with the majority faith, which they right. call just the faith, yeah. generally speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the 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 ma- major houses kept their godswoods as something that you know, even when the old religions were replaced with the new, right. they felt that the godswoods were still things they wanted to have, but that only in the north were they still treated as godswoods rather than just. Yeah, pretty god. Nice parks. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's obvious for the Starks. It has a uh-huh. deeper meaning. Yeah. It's a you know the way she describes it is kind of dark and primal versus at River Run where she grew up. It's bright and airy. Yeah. It's more park like. It sounds like. But I'm I'm guessing that that was always the case. I'm guessing that that's not just a function of the replacement of the old religions with the new. I get. I'm guessing that. The further south you go, the area the gods were. Sure. Yeah. It has probably a- always been the case. Yes, uh, the north does seem like a rather dark and primal place. Exactly. In, in yeah. general. Yeah. 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 Um, so we got a little bit about the faith that it was. Um, th- there's a sort of a, a seven-headed trinity. Right. A hep- heptinity. <laughs> no. Not sure what the word you're would the, be for that. <laughs> you're the math guy. You tell me. <laughs> uh, it sounds a little bit like. Sort of Christianity, sort of like she was baptized with oils and water, and uh, the the description of a sept sounds a little bit like a church. Yeah, it, it definitely comes across that yeah. way. Whereas Ned, he believes in the old gods, which uh, predate the faith. Um, <laughs> Be a funny name for them, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the word. And so, I mean, I think there's a there's a sort of a, a parallel here um, to the sort of coming of Christianity to Britain because Britain had a lot of sort of uh, pagan sort of like worship right. of you know the land and sort of the energy of the land and a lot of that was kind of um, supplanted by when Christianity came along so I think I think I think there are similarities between those two events oh, yeah. I, being British I always sort of see Britishness in fantasy yeah. I don't know why. Just, <laughs> well, I think a lot, I, there's a reason why, uh, even though these these characters are Westerosi, they speak with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to. They can speak with any kind of accent. Well, you're, you're reading the book with a British accent. <laughs> it's just a book. It doesn't right. say in the book that they've got British true. accents. I, I guess you're, I'm referring to the TV show. You are a little bit. Though, yeah. <laughs> but we, we get a little more... Um, little more of Ned. Yeah. We continue, you know, chapter one, we got uh, some of Ned's character. We're getting a little more um, in here in this chapter. You know, it's clearly he's affected by taking a man's life, and he's come to the God's Wood to cleanse himself and do some soul searching. He's 
compelled by his rank and role to do the things that he has to do, whether he likes them or not. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, I think, I think that, like you say, that's a continuation of what we learned from him, that he doesn't take any pleasure in those aspects of his uh of his job right yeah as i as i got to this part in the chapter you know it immediately struck me when caitlin said he thinks of me first even though he just found out that john aaron has died you know his first statement is what you know how are you and what about your sister and the and the boy i think he calls robin robert aaron yeah he's he's a good guy yeah you can include that i i like the um I mean, coming back to the sort of God's Woods a little bit, I like the, the depth of the story that I think she says at one point that the loam on the ground in the God's Woods is 10,000, in, right. in the Winterfell God's Wood is 10,000 years old, and it saw the walls of Winterfell grow around it. I, I kind of like that. Yeah, uh, that's a good uh, image. Yeah. Very good imagery. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get, by the way she describes things, kind of her mindset about the north and Winterfell in particular, the, the gloomy castle grew around it and um, the ancient weirwood brooded over a small pond. Yeah. 1,000 blood-stained hands in reference to the leaves of the uh, yeah. weirwood. She's not a big fan, is she? She doesn't, she, no. you know, she doesn't seem to yeah. relate very well. And yeah. So the central weirwood has a carved face and so it's known as the heart tree. And uh, the face, the carving of the face is supposed to predate the first men, basically, right. supposed yeah. to be thousands yeah. of years old. They were created, by those faces were created by the children of the forest. Forest. Created created the the children of the yeah. So the main religion um, that, that Catelyn is uh, part of, the, the new gods, are the seven gods of equal footing that represent basically the stages of life. Um, I like the mention of rainbows, because, of course, if you've got a seven-headed god, a rainbow is a natural right. color. Yeah, yes. yeah, I think that's a good one. Um, the one thing that's a little bit interesting to me is, I mean... If you look at the history of religion in Europe, it's interesting that there doesn't seem to be a, a strong push to enforce the new religion as right. the religion. Yeah. It's clearly there. There's clearly an undertone of it. You know, you sort of you feel that Catelyn looks down on the Starks just a little bit for still believing in the old right. gods. Not, I mean, not in a mean way. Just you know, she thinks that they're a little bit out of touch with the prevailing winds. But there doesn't seem to be a there seems to be at least a degree of toleration for yeah. um, still believing in the old gods. She definitely makes it, at least it comes across that everywhere but the north. Yeah. The the seven, the faith the, of the seven are are the gods yeah. to be worshipped. Uh, yeah. you know, she mentions the weirwood trees haven't been cut down or burnt out in everywhere but in the north, basically. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, just historically, what what I think, I mean, I'm not going to say this is going to happen in the books, but I think historically, when a when a new religion comes along and gains traction, particularly with the ruling classes, they tend to enforce that. They tend to, you know, certainly in sort of medieval times, like we're talking about, you know, so right. well, equivalent of medieval times, you will expect at some point they would use that religion as a means of control of the people. Sure. And they would say that your worship of anything else is, you know, not permitted anymore. And that leads to people having right. their uh, sort of underground services to remember the gods that they still believe in. Yeah, it only takes one one king or one monarch to, uh, to make such a claim. In, uh... Yeah. So yeah. the main point of this whole chapter, though, is that John Aaron is dead. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's pretty much the conclusion. And <laughs> <laughs> at least for John Aaron, anyway. <laughs> right? That's what he mostly is uh, concerned about. And we learn about Ned and King Robert being fostered together, almost like brothers, growing up under John Aaron in the Vale. And uh, we learn about how Aaron rebelled against the uh, prior king, King Aerys II Targaryen. Rather than give up the boys, he called his banners, rallied the troops, and uh, defended the boys against the do we, do we have? Do we know how old Ned and Robert were at that time? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think uh, I, I, I got the feeling that they were sort of like around 16, 17. Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah. they were, but I, but I too am not 100% sure about that. Just calling them boys, I mean, if you think about it, we were talking about uh, John and... Uh, 
uh, Rob. Rob last week, and they're only fourteen, and we're kind of I'm tempted to think of them as grown ups. Right. You know, so yeah, that's true. Yeah, they were probably mid to late teenagers. Yeah, that would be too. my guess. Uh, shortly, right at the same time, in fact, that uh, N- Ned and Catelyn married. John Aaron married Catelyn's sister, Lysa. Yeah, so it's slightly strange. So, your yeah. foster father becomes your brother-in-law. Yes. Okay, so that's, not, that's reasonable. And so Lysa and uh, Robin, Robert? Robert. Robert. Yes. Have uh, retreated to the Eyrie, uh, the seat of the Vale. Right. Um, with no great explanation why they've, they've left King's Landing. Right, it's... I don't know if that's intentionally vague yeah. or what, but uh, we do know that Caitlin's uncle Brendan, which is also Lysa's uncle Brendan, yeah. is uh, watching over Lysa. But we get the idea from Caitlin that he's not exactly going to snuggle with her warm, fuzzy <laughs> kind of guy, you know. Uh, he's, so, uh, yeah, so he's, he's a knight. <laughs> yeah, he's hostile. Tully, which is Catelyn and Lysa's father's brother. Yes, right? he's okay. yeah. Hoster Tully's younger brother. Right. Yeah, so the king's on his way, so Ned sends for his brother Ben from the Night's Watch, and I'd just like to point out that is a little bit unfair. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Garrett was really scared, and he ran away, and yeah. he got his head chopped off, but Ben gets to swan down to Winterfell whenever he feels like right. for a feast and a... Who knows what else? <laughs> Who knows how many of his vows well, he gets to break? Good meal. I think. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm tired and it's of not all so this, cold so down there either. Salt, yeah. Salted pork. Let's yeah. go have a nice meal. And we get a little more more info about the Night's Watch. You, you, um, you, you've liked talking about the Night's Watch, haven't I you? Do. This is, I do. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Night's Watch. Yeah, I know you do. They're short staffed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> plagues us all. They're becoming shorter and shorter staffed. Uh, desertions are increasing and deaths while ranging. And we get another reference to Mance Raider. I guess there's some debate. Is he to blame for the uh, deaths and desertions, or is there something else? We did read the prologue, so we know there. <laughs> <laughs> if only these people were reading the book, right. they would know what was going on. We know that at least two people, <laughs> well, two people, three people died. Two died at the hands of the other. Yeah. One deserted and then died at the hands of... of- Ned. Ned. Yes. So, um, yeah. So we've we've talked about this quite a bit. That that uh, to me, the th- threat of Mance Raider would not make me run away from the wall anytime no. soon. It's got to be something more right. existentially terrifying, especially if you're an old hand like Garrett was. Yeah. It's interesting that Ned plays down. He does the, the yes. supernatural aspects of why people are deserting why so many people are getting killed north of the wall and you know in fact you know Catelyn is superstitious about the things that might be up right. there and Ned is completely so either and I I, I have an opinion on this I either he is it's a good one <laughs> no it's not necessarily either he is protecting her from what right. he has d- learned or he didn't learn it and or completely disbelieves it anyway Right. We don't know which it is, but you have an opinion. Well, yeah. The, 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 I think it's. I think it's the latter. He simply doesn't think that it's true. He doesn't I, seem like the kind of guy that would buy into fairy tales right. and stuff. But at the same time, just read the prologue. I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt. But the thing is, the thing about that is, I, I, I'm with you. I, 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 I too. I'm, I'm like Ned. I'm a man of science. You I are. would not yes, you are. buy into the fairy tales, apart from the fact that Gary ran away from the wall in a state of genuine terror. terror. Yes. And I mean, like that wall is really high. That would do it for me. I mean, I'd be out of there day one. Just yeah. like looking over the edge would be enough. So <laughs> <laughs> something's put the fear into him, and it. <laughs> If he was protecting Cat from the worries about the White Walks and that, he wouldn't have mentioned the fact that something had put the fear into right. Cat. Right, he is... did say that as if you know, oh, it must have been the the, the weevils in the biscuits or the right. wall or something like that. <laughs> something put you the know. fear in him. So, so. I, either he's just being a bit dim at this point, Ned, or he just simply doesn't believe that this could happen, and so he's poo pooing the hole. Right. Very good point. And, and of course, Cat's point to him is, well, you just saw a dire wolf and nobody had seen either had seen that in hundreds of years either. So Evidence in the prologue, evidence in <laughs> chapter two, chapter one even. I think Ned's just turning a blind eye yeah, to this yeah. whole thing, really. It yeah. reminds me of, uh, there was a comedy show in England where they were talking about um, 
you know the end of Planet of the Apes? Spoiler alert for Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> he discovers that it's Earth yeah, right, because yeah. he sees the Statue of Liberty. Yes. Because it's Charlton Heston, the joke was that he just doesn't believe it. Even when presented with the like, overwhelming <laughs> levels of evidence, he just ignores it. <laughs> Including he's walking along the beach and the monkey starts singing, this is Planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Ned is like that. Right. Like, <laughs> it's not happening. I, this none is, of this is really happening. This cannot be real. Yeah. But Ned gets some good news. He gets cheered up a little he bit. He does, yeah. Yes. He's definitely happier about life once he hears that Robert's coming. Yes, his old friend is uh, coming to see him, and that lifts his spirits a little bit. Unfortunately, Caitlin cannot share in the excitement because she can only think about the dead dire wolf and the antler in the throat. Yeah. Which we will talk more about in a little yeah, bit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Ned's excited, yeah. at least. But it's tempered by the fact that he's not obviously not very fond of the Queen. Doesn't Cersei. seem to be that that Lannister woman. I think is how uh, he... L- Lannister woman. I sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and her family, the Lannisters. Uh, partly, I think, because they were late in joining Robert's cause in the rebellion that put Robert on the throne. Yeah, and they said when victory was all but certain. That yeah, seems like that's... that does seem like a good time to join. Th- in, that frankly. is, yeah. So we learn that Robert and Cersei have children. We've only heard about Tommen, the youngest, who's seven years old. And the same age as Bran. That's right. And it's tr- interestingly yeah. enough. Yeah. We get, a, we get a, just a little inkling that the Starks are different than most of the other houses. Caitlin goes on a bit about how most houses' words are some sort of boast or some sort of truth. And the Starks is just winter is coming. Yeah. And... It probably dominates your thoughts up in the north. Yeah. The fact that we're just coming. <laughs> Does it ever leave? <laughs> yeah. You know, we got uh, Above the Rest, which we talked about in Chapter 1 yeah. for the Malisters and the Baratheons is Ours is the Fury. I like that one. Yeah, that's a, mm-hmm. is an interesting one. Yep. And the Starks are just, winter is coming. <laughs> so maybe that has to do with, you know, the, the fact that the Starks were once kings and, uh, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown they're just like winter is coming yeah you know, it, it is what it is still though it, it's not really rousing is it no you know, as, as a speech <laughs> you're not going to uh, as i say one more time the troops. winter is coming yeah, we know <laughs> all right so comparison with the television show again it's very close it's pretty close yeah, yeah. All, all of this was captured in the tv show the News of John Arryn's death was interspersed with some footage of John Arryn's body lying in state right. in King's can, Landing. You can do that with television. Well, you can. Yeah. Uh, the Lannisters were seen discussing his demise. Right. Um, yeah. And then, was, yeah. The thing we wanted to talk about was the was the, again the symbolism symbolism of the direwolf being killed by the stag's antler. That happens in the book. It happens in the TV show. But in the TV show, they also find the dead stag. Right. And That's, that is a slight difference. It is. It's an important difference. Yeah, potentially. An it's it's difference. slight, but yeah. it can it can mean more. It can mean a lot more. Yeah. So, so what is Catelyn afraid of in the book? Well, she knows that the dire wolf died because of a stag. The right. Symbol of the Baratheons yes. who were on their way is the stag. Yeah, but so, in the in the TV show, it's more of a sense of. If the Starks try to destroy the Baratheons, they themselves will perish, which is a... Right, because this direwolf died killing a killing stag. Killing a stag, yeah. right. So we're reading the book, so we'll uh, go yeah. with the book. But um, yeah, yeah. this uh, that is an interesting I mean, difference. If, yeah. They might not have even thought, you know, when they were writing that scene, they just probably thought is much more... Uh, yeah, inter- where, where did that thing come from? Yeah. <laughs> we need a dead stag because right. there's an antler in his throat. Yeah, right. In her throat, I should say. So some uh, some background, again, avoiding spoilers. The children of the forest are said to predate, somewhat ironically, the first men. Right. Uh, the first men came, came across the, yeah, the narrow sea from Essos to Westeros uh, roughly eight to 12,000 years ago, known as the Dawn Age. Right. The children are not human, per se. They are humanoid, but not human, and they are the original inhabitants of Westeros. Yeah, they're special... Green seers were children of the forest that had the ability to see through the eyes of the weirwood, and because weirwoods live for so long, they can see both the future and the past when looking. They have to be right in front of them, right? Because they can't turn. (laughs) (laughs) But so that wasn't all the children; that was just special, right? Yes. Okay. Green seers, they were called. Yes. But when the first men did arrive on Westeros, there was 
many a battle for thousands of years, the first men and the children of the forest warred until they agreed uh, on a pact on the Isle of Faces, which Catelyn mentions in this chapter, I believe. She says, you know, that's one place where the weirwood trees still stand. And uh, the, the pact was that the children get the forest, which is... (laughs) <laughs> suitable for their name <laughs> and the first men get the open lands okay yeah and uh that's where the first men learned about the old gods was through the children of the forest so the the old gods predate the first men they are the they are the gods of the children of the forest right yeah. Interesting. so ice I feel like we talked about ice last week. We talked about Valerian. St- oh, we, we talked, talked about, about steel. Valerian steel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ca- steel versus magic forged steel versus castle forged steel. Yeah, I hear you. Ice so, is a good example of yeah, so, Valerian so steel. Ned's sword ice was forged in Valeria before the Doom of Valeria, more than four hundred years ago. The Doom of Valeria, I think, is is something akin to. Um, uh, the name of the lost island that sank into the Atlantic. Atlantis. Atlantis. Yes. And blanked on the word Atlantis. <laughs> yes. Something akin to that. And uh, it's a start relic from when they were kings, not just lords. Right. Yeah. It's a very big sword. Yeah. He mentions this like, well, I think Bran mentions in chapter one, it's like almost as tall as Ned or something like that. I it's could be making that but up. But again, know. Valyrian steel is lighter. Right. So mm-hmm. perhaps you can swing that thing around. Uh, we get a little bit of geography. The Trident is the name of the large river in the Riverlands, uh, so-called because it has three main tributaries, green, blue, and red. Uh, the Tullys are the lords of the Riverlands. Hoster Tully's title is the Lord Paramount of the Trident. Oh, that's very fancy. Uh, it dominates the topography of that region. Crossing it, Crossing becomes, it. can become a problem, it's, especially it's in It's a militarily spots. important thing yes. to be able to do. Yes, and we also learn a little bit about the Targaryens. They are... Uh, or the previous royal family. Their sigil is a three-headed red dragon on a black background, and their words are fire and blood. See, now that's, that's more like it. Yes. Yeah, that's no winter is coming right there. <laughs> you see <laughs> see those words, you're thinking, yeah. I'm not going to mess with these people. Winter These is guys coming. are just going to wait for us to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They uh, have been displaced by the current king, Robert Baratheon, the first of his name, and... Targaryens lived in King's Landing prior to being yeah. unseated yeah. by Robert's Rebellion. Yeah. In Pedantry Corner, I'm hugely disappointed uh, to report that I got nothing, nothing this week. Well, the editors improved you know, as time went by, it seems. It changed. There'll editors, be more, maybe. I'm sure. Yeah. So, what uh, do you think? Oh, well, I loved it. I mean, I mean, in not very much time, again, just like painting this. I, I was thinking about the way the book is constructed earlier, and I was... Um, I, I have an English-American difference here to talk about. Because, okay. Because I was thinking that these early chapters are the warp of the uh, tapestry that is being woven here. Right. They're yeah. the warp, and we're going to, as time goes by, we're going to pass that shuttle back and forth to create what in England we would call the weft. Whoa. Wow. But in the United States, you call it the woof, right? <laughs> the woof and the... Uh, the wolf and the wolf. Michele's looking at me blankly. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So, so when you make, when you uh, weave, when you weave cloth, uh, oh. you, see, you have. Ver- I do have a, a yeah. knowledge gap in you have weaving. Vertical strands. Okay. And they're the warp, and then the horizontal strands that go through them uh, are the weft or I the see, wolf. Now I get what you're. See the analogy, the imagery you're making. So, yeah. so these early chapters are the. Pillars, right. basically. And then they're going to be sort of like things going the through. Storylines will inter- be. Intertwines all this. Right. Say. Okay. Yes. About. And I think it's a very nice way to do it, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, he's, he's a pretty good writer, that George. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. I think he uh, yeah, he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. yeah uh, it just, you know, we're, we're each chapter so far gets a little bit more interesting, sucks yeah. you in a little yeah. further. You know, we got the idea of a newer religion supplanting an old one. That's a great facet of yeah. creating a story. And seems to have a hallmark of the spread of Christianity into Britain, which yeah. uh, you have already mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the sense of the faith being sort of officially sanctioned, but not yet. You know, it's not right. yet shameful or frowned upon still believing the old gods. But the, the, the Starks are, you know, sailing against the wind a little bit by right. still believing in them. Yeah. And we get some uh, really 
nice moments, really sweet moments between Caitlin and Ned. Yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty clear that their love is a rock and yeah. allows Caitlin to live in the... We might uh, need a new section for sort of softness here, you know, because this is... <laughs> it's all touchy-feely. Right. <laughs> you know, it, I, I think... Caitlin's Catlin, Caitlin Catlin. I don't know. You see, I, you see, I want to say Caitlin. Me too. But but I also want to uh, contract it to Cat. And that's her nickname is Cat. Yeah. So, so then that makes you want to say Catlin. Right. But I want to say Caitlin. So let's, we're going with Caitlin and Cat, right? Sure. We'll do yeah. Caitlin and Cat. Caitlin and Cat. Uh, but I think Cat's love for Ned, which Ned is Edard. I think they do they does she call him Ned in this chapter? I, she does, I think. I okay. think I saw the first step. All right. So first Ned step. is the uh, nickname for Edard. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, she's not in love with Winterfell or the North. Not massively, no. No, but her love for Ned allows her to overlook some of the issues she has with the area. All right, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. All right. I well, think we've covered uh, most of the important things that we uh, could cover in this chapter. Yeah. So please subscribe if you're enjoying uh, our little podcast. Yes, uh, please do. And uh, also, we'd love to hear from you. You could reach us at ghosts.com. Aaron Hell at gmail.com. That's ghosts plural. Okay, thanks a million. Until All right, next thanks. time. Bye.